Nerds. Oh, well, I Nerds. thought I'd give it a shot. What do you got there? You got S- something? Speaking of Call of Duty, is this in Call of Duty yet? Uh, I actually don't know. This, I don't know the, like the correct complete term. I think it's right here in front of me, but I'm just going to call it the MCX Spear, the SIG Spear. It was the uh, the military designation. Was oh, the, we got to uh, start the timer. Oh, well, yeah, put 12 minutes on the clock, start the timer. Can you see that? So the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Although we've wasted 10 seconds already. Ghetto. <laughs> so this is the the culmination of the the, na- uh, the next generation squad weapon uh, program in the army. They were working on like a belt fed and a new rifle, theoretically, to replace the M4. This is what they came up with. This is what won. Um, this particular model is the... They did a the pre-release built from leftover parts from the contract, so this isn't one of the new ones. Although we do have one of the new ones, um, mm-hmm. in 308 in the vehicle. I should have grabbed. Could have grabbed that. Yeah, right. So this is a uh, this is the technical designation for the military was the XM5. They changed it to the XM7. Why I have no idea. <laughs> uh, military. Uh, this one. So this is chambered in uh, 277 Fury. This is known as the MCX Spear. Just as a as the standalone uh, as a civilian model, and the only thing really different from that one and the commercial ones, besides I don't think they've released the two seventy sevens yet. I think it's they've just released three hundred eights. Is that one has the matching uh, Sig SLX suppressor that they're never going to release commercially, like that particular model. Um, Looks good. Yeah, no. So it's a thirteen. Was it? It's thirteen. It's thirteen five or thirteen seven. Yeah, I don't remember. Barrel. So like with the suppressor, it's pretty good length. Um, you can see from the size of the Magpul buttstock, uh, how like the the proportions, of yeah, it, quite a bit different. Um, but yeah, so two seventy seven Fury. The whole thing with that is it's a uh, high pressure cartridge. Yes, yeah, so it's six by eight, uh, six point eight by fifty one. Um, so the military on this program they spec the the basically the projectile and they had to build guns around it. Um, it comes in a brass cased variation, and then it has the the uh, the hybrid cased ammo, which I suppose we should have brought. That'd have been smart. Um, yeah, it's in the vault. But yeah, you've you've spent pretty decent amount of time behind it. What are your what yes. are your thoughts? It is freaking rad. Uh, this well, not I haven't shot this one. We well, the one that we've shot is in the vault. Uh, sub MO, sub MOA groups, which is fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time, and deer season sucked, or else I was going to shoot a deer long range. I'll pick that project back up this winter and probably do some pigs. Uh, just run out of time, then ally thing happened, so I wasn't able to get a pig at long range with it. But I will say this: with a hybrid case ammo, we have some 150 grain. Uh, it's a 150 grain. I believe it's a, a Nosler AB LR, if I recall correctly. Uh, out of the muzzle, out of the suppressor, rather, chronographs. And mind you, this is a 13.5 or 13.7, whatever it is. I don't remember. Chronographed at over 2,700 feet per second. I have 13 inch barrel, 150 grain projectile, which is fantastic. Like it's. And I'm not, I don't recall the BC on that projectile. Like, again, for those that don't know, like a 6.8 or whatever, it's essentially a 270 Creedmoor is what, well, kind of not really. I mean, the the brass version, and when you start comparing the brass to like a Creedmoor cartridge, it has the, like, almost like the Creedmoor shoulder, but it's a little bit higher. Uh, it's almost like a, you took a 308 cartridge and damn near like AI'd it, essentially. I mean, uh, not AI'd, uh, yeah, a uh, damn near 308 AI is what it, it, it looks like to me. And then you shove a 270 projectile. And then the, the, the other side of that is they're running. Uh, it's like a normal AR is what, like 60,000 PSI. I think a lot of your 308 stuff's like 62K. Uh, this cartridge they're loading now is 80, 80K PSI. Mm-hmm. And I believe I've read that they will actually go up to, like they've rated it to go over 100K uh, PSI. Yeah. I'd imagine with like being it's a military thing and they're not, it's going to be filthy and everything else. And uh, especially on belt feds, if they oil up the ammo, like it's going to have to be able to withstand like some pretty high pressures. And like I said, 
that's freaking phenomenal performance out of a that short of a barrel uh beings it's a piston driven and it's suppressed and it's like their flow through style suppressor recoil wasn't super high or anything like that it's actually very pleasant to shoot for an ar you know i guess you're going to call this somewhat of an ar-10 platform it is a bit on the heavy side i mean this is a big piston driven it's a big boy you know chunky boy damn boy damn boy <laughs> effect but it, i mean it is compact you know for what it is and again like i said that one I have over there, I threw a Mark V on it uh, in preparation for the long-range kill that never happened. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, again, sub-MOA groups. Um, and so that's kind of interesting. I think the two things that uh, the the Gunstagram influencers uh, were largely saying is that heavy recoil and, uh, oh, these things, it's not very accurate. Like I think it's, somebody said three MOA. I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me with, one, them being horrible shots, two... It, that was just one rifle. I mean, we had and three. Well, they were probably the ragged out demo rifles yeah. that were. Uh, I I would guess they were probably ready. But they probably weren't even running the hybrid case stuff. They were probably running the. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I shot some of the brass case stuff and then cleaned it and everything else because I I didn't know if it was new or used barrel or what the deal was there. Uh, and according to Sean, there's like there's no way of knowing. Yeah, like, they, they just sent spare parts. Yeah, basically. So. Uh, but like with the brass case stuff and it, I. God, I think the brass case stuff was down at 2,500 feet per second. And what were those 130s or something like that, uh, if I recall correctly? FMJ? But uh, it was like one M away. It wasn't like super impressive or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just never trust anybody when it comes to. No. Uh, no. When it comes to accuracy no. on, on the internet. You see these goddamn people shoot. No. Now, it is a little heavy, <gasps> but that's. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, steel or not steel. Uh, you know, you got metal receivers. Um, it's pretty like it's it's beefy in it, but it's like it's built very well. Yeah, it's it's meant for the military, so there's like going to be heavy use parts and then stuff like that. Like what y'all can't see is there's <laughs> it's just the the craziest part about it to me. What y'all can't see on my side is a charging handle that folds up out of the way, but like a scourging yeah. handles type situation. But over here you have your <laughs> like. Normal charge now, so it's like I guess it's a redundancy thing for the military. I'm I want to say that was part of the contract, probably. I mean, well, that's where that's where people get fucked up. Yeah, and they're fucked like, off oh, on these stupid. things. Stupid is like, no, the military's stupid. Like the yeah, the <laughs> you know when it comes to these con or competitions, they're the military says here's our requirements and you have to build around it. Yeah, and so a lot of the design choices, I mean. So again, the, the one you have, does it have the side charger or just top charger? I was trying to think. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, Interesting. I my brain was like dump that. You know, I, a lot of people like side chargers. Um, I just don't. I don't get the redundancies. Like the side charger would be cool. Again, it seems like it would reduce the gas uh, back on the shooter even more if you just didn't do the top charge handle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my Spear LT. I should have brought that in here for this video. Maybe we'll do another talk on it because I'm really happy with that one. The Spear LT 16 inch. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a side charger, which obviously it's a different platform, but. You know. Now I think here's my biggest deal. I like the the concept and where this is going. Yes. What I would love to see is something between the Spear LT and the Spear that is a six millimeter, basically a six arc but fury. It's like six millimeter fury. Oh yeah. Like a like a smaller small cartridge running like eight because that's the biggest thing about the arc is it's it's gim like its performance is amazing gimped at fifty two k yeah psi. You, you stick it in a bolt gun. Well, I mean, I'm sure I've talked about this before. Like my bolt gun, which I'm gonna obviously run higher pressures. I'm running 105s out of a 16 inch at over 2,700 feet per second. That's freaking phenomenal. Like you're you're starting to scare six Creed territory. Yeah. Now picture uh, factory six. Now Creed picture anyways. that in a yeah in yes. 80k, 100k. I want all of it. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I just, I had other topics in mind. Just kind of like, oh, we never did anything about the. What's well, been sitting in the back there in the last couple of videos? We should talk about it. Um, but I wish I'd have brought the the casings. The the yeah, I'll put it's it all super put a cool. Like it's it's very cool. And uh, the answer, I haven't tried it yet, but I guarantee you can reload that shit. Yeah. <laughs> now, I probably won't fool that for some time. Like. I you know I still need to shoot more of the hybrid case stuff because what I what I did was like I did all like getting 
the feel of, the feel for the rifle and everything with the fmjs and then i just basically dialed in with the hybrid k stuff and you know didn't shoot a bunch of it because like who knows when we're gonna get more of it and it's it's hunting ammo it's again the nozzle acubon lr i think the 150 grains is what we have for the hunting stuff and again like i was really i want to go shoot some like all dead long because again it's 13 5 barrel or 13 7 whatever it is and it's chunking 150 grader at 27 and some change and we're, we're not even sure if that barrel's broke in yet or not uh d- need to spend more time on it and like maybe d- uh, really dig into the ammo like what the specs look like as far as like standard deviations and i probably have all that shit wrote down i just don't recall but it's super impressive it is again it is kind of a little on the girthy side but you know it's compact like it has that going for it and it's super cool like like you said i really love where they're going with this stuff like the hybrid case and like if someone did do something like that a hybrid case but a short ar-15 hybrid case that would be ridiculous that would be awesome that'd be so freaking awesome i think you kind of like saw like that would be like the best possible version of like a do it all rifle yes absolutely uh i mean a couple things and my spear lt has it uh and i don't know why i've seen it before on other ARs. i don't recall which ones but i don't know why this doesn't become a mainstay in the ar-15 industry is that the uh pins for the uh I just went blank. What is this called? <laughs> charge charge handle. handle. The charge, the pins that go down for the charge handle catch. Cause anybody, well, it probably isn't that big of a deal. Cause most people don't shoot the rifles enough. Once you hit a certain round count on most ARs, like it's eventually going to break that piece of aluminum and you're going to have to dowel pin it. I guess is what you would call this in order for it to catch your handle or else your handle is going to sit there and slap you in the face. <clears throat> super cool i like all the ambidextrous controls and stuff wait is this one out or is that the, just the lt yeah it does uh like the ambidextrous controls uh my trigger in my lt is really nice i don't know about this particular one but the one on same structures the same one stuff. we're shooting fantastic ergonomics of the grip my boy's mag pull over here your timer's going uh, off but it's not being vocal yeah what's the deal there uh i hope it's to delay <laughs> well really cool look for more if we're, like we're gonna do more with this stuff we're just things got out of hand this summer yeah we plan to do actual like sit down video <clears throat> content on it so uh there's definitely gonna be some hunting content on it yeah i just picked up the 308 literally today um so we'll do some comparisons hopefully and show kind of the the drastic mm-hmm. difference there. my question is <clears throat> Is the internals of the rifle the same on that 308? Is, is this one is just an ammo thing? Yeah, I'm, I think it's, I'm assuming it's going to be a bolt head swap. That's what I'm guessing. Like they, it's overbuilt and then. I think it's the same bolt head unless they have a, like a, a chunkier well, that's bolt what I'm, head. That's what I'm curious. Well, We're going to have to look at it. I don't know. You probably didn't see the comparison photos I threw up at one point, which was the, the size of the bolt head versus uh, okay. like the, the extra thickness on the, the edges. But no, that's honestly one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to get it is to tear both down and do like, and see see what's changed. Because if if the bolt is all like everything's the same, it's just at, at that point, it's the difference in the case. That means we should be able to run like bolt gun three hundred eight loads through your little shorty. Yeah. If the bolt and everything is the same, like those little bit steeper loads, like that we you know sell for bolt guns. Not necessarily way up there in that high pressure, you know, stainless steel, you know, uh, base cartridge they make, but it should be able to handle those higher pressure loads. And we'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. It'd be fun. It'd be, it's again, and it's FDE. <laughs> That's the biggest reason. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, our 12 minutes is up. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time.